<laughs> oh my god, talk about a sixth round steal. Oh my goodness, Daryl Perry. And he does have the puck skills, but he's a two-way forward, which is strange. McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! Oh! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number six of this NHL 21 Custom League Draft to Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, go up into that top corner of the video right now. There will be a card with a link to the entire playlist. Also, if you do enjoy this video, please go down below. Consider dropping a like. It only takes a second. It really helps out the video and the channel. And also, YouTube's telling me 70% of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel right now. If that is the case and you're not subscribed and you do enjoy my content, please go down below and consider hitting that subscribe button. And uh, also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss when these uploads come out. So guys, last episode, we got through the off-season and, uh, or I guess it would be the post-season, not the off-season, um, and got through the draft lottery where the Kelowna Comets finally won a draft lottery not with the number one odds hilariously enough to um we ended up you know landing that number one pick charlie k going to be the guy that we are most likely going to take here even though there are some other really good looking players in here uh, as much as i want to take like a goalie or somebody like that i wish we could have more than one first round pick unfortunately that's not the case um but I do have a couple other guys in here that I'm very excited for. Uh, Guy Valcourt being one of those guys. He looks like he's going to be pretty high rated. Um, besides that, let's see who else is in here. Back could look good, but I don't know if we need another defensive defenseman necessarily. Um, and at this point, guys, I think I'm kind of decided on the defense. I want to go for preferably more pinch and shoot defensemen. That's the system I want to build around. And as you can see there with UC Cycola, um, hopefully he's going to be a low elite. I'm not sure on that yet, but I'm hoping so. Uh, besides Cycola, I had other guys pinned here. Um, it is kind of round by round. Um, maybe not. Oh yeah, Pentakinen again. I'm just, I'm hoping... Uh, one, that he's offensive, and two, that he is a low elite. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We'll see. Um, there's a couple other guys. One guy looks like he could be a steal coming up here. Um, not Riddle, but again, uh, yeah, he's not not a pinch and shoot, but not a lot of guys are around here, so you know, hopefully that's wrong. <laughs> um betting on the wrong things possibly brylin is huge but i doubt he's actually going to turn out um but this guy there's one guy in here that i am quite set on uh to take i think it's the next pick coming up yeah this guy daryl perry 6'5 216 pounds you know he's 19 years old but two-year eta in like a pick 191 he's like sixth round seventh round kind of esque position so yeah, those are kind of the guys I'm looking at. I think we're going to take all these guys. There's seven in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No goalies this year. So we'll see if our goalies can get things going here, the guys that we've drafted already. But anyways, uh, let's get to retirees here, see what happens. And all right, Jason Spezza retires with 940 points. Didn't quite break that 1,000-point mark, but that is okay. He is 40 years old now. Um... Let's see, Corey Perry was a really good pick there too in 2003. Um, yeah, 810 points. Uh, Travis Zajac retires there as well. Shea Weber too, that's a huge name, especially on defense at Anochara. Just so many good players in here for the most part. And as far as goalies go, we see Ryan Miller, Jimmy Howard, and Corey Schneider all call it quits there for their respective careers lots of good players and uh yeah that is the retirees this year so here you guys can see the value on our team um Ilya Mikheyev or Mikhaev, however you want to say it has shot up like crazy um he's going to be you know one of those players that's just fantastic moving forward here um we do have a lot of forwards that are looking really good not so many defense though um, so that is going to be a point of emphasis here over the next season or two, most likely. Kajula is up to an 85. Are you serious? Wow. Um, 
I mean, I guess he had a pretty good season. Yeah, he had like 54, 64 points. Jeez. So yeah, Kajula went off this year, no question about that. And at 29 years old, he's going to be getting paid. Um, not too many other crazy big names. Connor Sherry, Brandon Dillon. That's pretty much it for our rosters. As far as goaltending goes, though, um, Kim Whiting hopefully going to start to turn out here. He's definitely grown. Um, I believe we drafted him at a six foot, 190 pounds, so he's gone up an inch and a pound. That's it. Um, Weinrich, I don't believe, has grown at all. Nope. No growth at all for Weinrich and Walted. Same size when we drafted him, so that's all okay. Um, but yeah, we got pick one, pick 37, I believe. Yeah, 37, uh, 69, pick 101, pick 133, uh, pick 165, and pick 197. It's literally plus 32 every time, um, except for the first overall pick, which you know we moved ahead on, but that's okay. So yeah, anyways, guys, let's start the draft here, and uh, this should be a good draft. I'm, I'm hoping anyways. we got to get a little lucky, but there's two, I'd say, guaranteed picks for the most part. Um, not necessarily Daryl Perry might not turn out, but I'm expecting him to. So, uh, But Valcourt does look like he's going to be really good too. So anyways, no question here. We're taking Charlie K. Um, might not be the best player available, but probably the best potential, you know, apart from a goalie that, you know, we already have goalies as much as I would like an NHL ready goalie. We got to take the brothers here, Charlie and Jason K. They got to play together. So, okay. 79 overall, not great, not bad, but not great. Um, oh, and Laddie's 82 overall. Are you serious right now? Oh my God. And Harrington's 83. Cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Two guys that could have been, uh, that would have been better picks, 99 points and 88 points. Yeah. Like those guys are really good players. Um, but I mean, yeah, Charlie K is going to be a really great player too. I'm, I'm hoping anyway. So, um, let's go over to pick 37, see what the rest of the yikes, terrible second round to start here. But see what the rest of this draft showed. Langford was good. I was expecting to get a guy like him if we were lucky. Um, and, you know, we got a better player than that. So that's always good. Edwards was an elite defenseman. Um, he looks awesome. Rene as well. Oh, McBride should have, uh, should not have been picked there. That's a f mess up. Oh, Vancouver gets Quincy Torres. So we're going to see Quincy Torres in our division. He's technically listed as a minor starting goalie, but man, at 18 years old and 78 overall as a goalie, like, you know he's going to have a good career. Glebov was awesome. Okposo was sick. Man, this is just a really solid draft. Wow. So yeah, anyways, um, a really solid first round anyways. I don't know about draft yet. We're still kind of figuring that one out, but um, I have to go with the one-year ETA. And at this point, he's most likely going to be a medium top six. Um, yeah, I, I have to go with Guy Velcourt just because he's going to be a good player. There's no question about that. And let's see. Nice. Okay, 74 overall. That's pretty good. And that is pretty good for a second round pick. So, yeah, he's going to turn out to be a, hopefully a good top six player for this team eventually. We'll see what happens there. Start of the third round looked pretty atrocious. Okay, Baldwin was decent. He was also a sniper, 64 overall, low elite. Um, Coletta was decent. Oh, there's a lot of good defensemen in here. Maybe I should have taken a defenseman. Yeah, I probably should have. Um, anyways, um, there's a lot of really good defensemen in the second round. That's where we got to get our defensemen. I will remember that for next year. Second round picks, or second round picks, second round defensemen are going to be good, hopefully, as long as, you know, we don't consistently pick, like, medium top sixes, but now we're going to try to get some defensemen here, see what happens, uh, but I'm going to go with Saikola, who's the best defenseman on the board of this pick, and he turns out to be, okay, a 61 rated low top four defenseman. 
two-way defenseman, so not terrible. Um, and, you know, as long as he's got the pinch and shoot, might fit into the top six in his career, that's possible. A lot of better picks instead of him. Um, but that's typical usually when you're trying to pick defensemen. Sometimes they turn out. Most of the time, they don't. But, um, yeah, all right. Uh, Bootland was a nice pick, but, again, a forward. I just I want a good defenseman in this draft, and I don't know if we're going to get one, but I'm you know keeping my fingers crossed, and we'll see what happens. So uh, over to the next pick, again going with a defenseman, Pentakainen might make the team in his career, probably won't, most likely will get stuck in the AHL, but an offensive defenseman will hopefully help with chemistry in the upcoming years, and please be offensive, okay, okay, so Esa Pentakainen is offensive, but terrible potential. Yeah, not the greatest pick I've made by any means. Okay, anyways, over to pick 133 now. Um, yeah, this draft isn't going nearly as great as the last couple did. Anybody else that's, like, stunningly good in here? Okay, Boynov was a starter, but he's 20 years old. Yikes. Um, oh, 73 rated Emmanuel Barch. Huge goalie, too. Um, but, yeah, weird one there. Um, so for the next pick, uh, I don't want to take a medium seventh defenseman. I would rather take, what are we at? 133. And I have Riddle pinned here. If he's medium six, I'll be happy. I doubt he will be, but again, just please be offensive. And okay, he's a two way, but he is medium six. Okay. Not actually a terrible pick. Um, not great, obviously, but we're not picking defensive defensemen, which is good for a change. That normally doesn't happen, so normally all those guys end up somehow becoming defensive, and then I have no chemistry, like Hirsch would have been defensive. Much better potential there, but that's okay. Um, what else do we got? Oh, this was, yeah, this is the Daryl Perry pick. If he's a playmaker, man, I swear. He can't, like, he could be. He should be a playmaker. He's got A-rated puck skills. Um, I would actually bet on a power forward out of anything. But, you know, 39.65 games. Probably just had injuries. Um, but let's see how Daryl Perry turns out. And... <laughs> Oh my god, talk about a sixth round steal. Oh my goodness, Daryl Perry. And he does have the puck skills, but he's a two-way forward, which is strange. Wow. Um. Yeah, talk about a late round steal at center. Daryl Perry was definitely the guy to take. Holy jeez, okay. Um, anybody else with decent potential? I mean, never mind a 69 overall rating. He would, in any other draft we've had, he would be the second best player in our prospect selection. Oh, okay, Romano was decent, um, but a lot lower rated, but 18 to be fair. But in any other draft, I swear, guys, any other draft, that would have been a better selection than our second round pick. We've literally never drafted a 69 rated player in anything but the, f or like 69 rated or higher in the first, or in anywhere but the first round, um, except for this season, of course where we just got um, Guy Valcourt. So for my final pick, I'm going to go with Mikhail Silverberg here. It's Silverberg. I just say Silverberg. But um, please be offensive. We have no scouting report on him. Okay, two-way. Um, 55 overall, 19 years old. <sighs> Not a spectacular draft, honestly, but... Um, oh, Ballard was kind of nice. Anyways not a bad draft i'm fairly happy with that uh we get you know three good players out of this draft in charlie k guy valcourt and daryl perry cycola is a big question mark and that's really about it so you know we miss on a couple picks and that's honestly the first season where we've really missed hard on a couple but it really didn't look like there was too much to select anyways honestly so uh yeah i'm pretty happy with it still so guys, I actually forgot to go over the comments before the draft, um, but funny enough, the first one I'm going to highlight here, Duke Storm had two 
uh, comments that I thought were worth highlighting. Um, he said from the last video, he said, after that draft, I'm convinced you're cheating lol. Um, well, you know, this one wasn't as great, but, uh, you know, we still got a steal in uh, Daryl Perry. Absolutely. And then the other comment he had here, he said, I think you got to try to play Weston Zajac in the NHL, maybe third line. That's what I was planning on. Um, we might play him higher, but we'll see. Um, it looks like the team is actually growing into like certain players are really growing into decent overalls here, even though this team is just terrible. But um, anyways, let's go to the resign phase now. We got a lot of coaches expiring. My goodness, all the AHL. They're just like, yep, I'm out. <laughs> um, can you please be our AHL head coach? Louis Como or Louis Como, however you want to say it. Um, so we'll sign him. We'll keep a couple of these guys in here, but I do need a spot for like one or two of these guys to actually, you know, still like sign new or we need spots to sign new coaches still. Um, and we got a couple scouts expiring. They should all resign again. We're not playing with owner mode this franchise mode. Normally I would, but just didn't really feel like it, especially with the no salary cap. I felt that it was just better to uh, to just turn off all the owner mode crap that normally distracts me. So yeah. All right, we have a bunch of players about to become RFAs. Again, it's just re-signing. It's just to say yes, this guy re-signed, this guy re-signed, so on and so forth. Um, so Eric Sider. Wants a four-year deal. We're gonna offer him seven million just to make sure, but uh, doesn't matter. Gio wants another two years with the team at thirty-nine. That's crazy, but sure. Kajula up to an eighty-five doesn't want to resign. He wants a five-year deal. Um, I'm gonna offer him six and a half million, and I'm really hoping he signs. But I would actually like to hold on to him. Same with Pius Sutter here. Um, Three million should suffice. Connor Sherry doesn't want to stay with the team, but I want him to stay with the team. This is why I play no cap, um, is just so we can get these guys back and, you know, the team can be a bit stronger. Um, honestly, this might not be the greatest tactic because the team might actually end up finishing with a better record this year too. That is definitely possible. Brandon Dillon doesn't want to re-sign. I want him to re-sign, so... Six mil for three years. Again, money is worthless in this franchise mode, but that's okay. Um, Vetrano wants a two-way? Seriously? Why? He's 81 overall. He's literally better than a whole bunch of guys on this team. Um, Kiefer Sheward's a no. Nolachari's a no. That is okay because I want to get the K Brothers into the lineup this year instead. I know you guys might, you know, like advise me to um, let them play an extra year in junior, but... We're going to throw him in head first. Um, just, yeah, it's about time that we actually get some prospects in here. And when you get a pair of high elite brothers in who are going to go off, off as the two highest rated brothers in NHL history, maybe? I guess it isn't NHL, it's CPHA, but like literally a year apart, they're going to be awesome. And I would really like to uh, just get them here sooner rather than later right like you guys kind of understand what i'm saying there i hope uh declan Yudes is hopefully going to get an nhl role this year too i'm still working my way around that and figuring all this out guy valcourt i'm not even going to offer a contract to yet he put up 70 points in 65 games um but he's got to play he's got to play one more season i think in junior I am going to sign Daryl Perry this year, though. I do want him to uh, get into the league, or get into the AHL anyways. Uh, Leno has to get signed. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping Leno turns out to be a pinch and shoot, but we shall see what happens there. Cycola is going to get a contract as well, and that is going to be it. I'm going to leave all these other guys unsigned for now. Bednar's I might not even re-sign, or might not even offer an ELC to, but we shall see. Um, and yeah, then just a whole bunch of other RFAs. Goaltenders seem to want to re-sign, so that's always a good thing. And then I'm hoping by this upcoming season, Wallstead is actually ready to go. 
for the NHL backup role anyways. Um, simply because we have two more guys expiring there. Manlo, I've kind of given up on, not going to lie. Um, he's not looking too hot right now and uh, probably isn't going to make the NHL at this rate, but you never know. You know, Ratchinek actually had a really good season last year, put up 69 points in 82 games. Um, he could be in the NHL if he grows a little bit more, but... Uh, Not too hot on the right wing there, honestly. The left wing looks a lot better. There's six or seven guys there that are all good to play for the most part. Um, Connor Sherry did get an offer. Yeah, the left wing looks solid. Um, might have to draft a couple more right wingers moving forward here, but... Uh, Overall, I do want one, two, three, four, and then Zajac's 5K6. Oh boy, okay. Um, Going to be an interesting group here for this upcoming season. So we got Hamnick, Garcia, Perry, and then Douglas, as well as Conacher. So I'm not re signing Dowling or Camp this year. Um, our centers are looking really strong right now. So yeah, let's advance a day. I assume everybody's going to re sign, but we do get some coaches back here. I had a lot of scouts. All right, so Kukan signs, Miller signs, Sutter signs, Lindgren signs, Dylan signs, Sherry signs, Iafalo signs, Giordano signs, Vetrano signs, DeSmith signs, Simic signs, Kajula signs, Gleason signs, Perry signs at ELC, Kuffner joins, Charlie K joins the team, Douglas uh, re signs. Tristan Leno signs, uh, Moser resigns, Conacher resigns, Sidor resigns, Sider, Sidor, Eric Sider resigns, Cycola can't sign due to full roster. And I think that was it. That was the only guy that didn't actually resign was um, UC Cycola. Again, I can literally just take a guy or two that is not going to resign, like such as Dowling or. Um, Irving or Irwin sorry as well I just I need to get rid of these guys we have so many defensemen it's insane um so yeah we are just gonna toss a bunch of guys out to free agency just be like bye see you later um so yeah Cycola should sign that now um I think we got both goalies too didn't we so yeah Cycola does sign there and we did get both goalies so we're good to go to free agency Maybe there'll be a UFA or uh, an RFA or somebody who's... I mean, we can't RFA sheet offer because we can't give up picks. It's just not worth it. But let's go to free agency. Okay, well, it's good to see that all these guys are listed as NHL players, except for, you know, Hamannick, which makes sense. Um, yeah, this is looking good. Like, I'm not not stressing out about the team. The only guy is Declan Eudes. Um I would like him to be in the NHL this upcoming year, so we will figure that out with roster moves as we go along. Um, and then goalies should be the same situation as it has been for a while. Our highest valued goalies are not signed, so that's kind of how I expected it to go for a while. So let's see what is available in free agency. Um, Pasternak, Gensel. Gensel was a late third round pick who turned out to be insane. Tyler Ennis went, yeah, went early. Yeah, Chris Tanev. Again, I don't really need defense, honestly. Um, looking more so for... I don't even know what, honestly. Kiefer Sherwood's there. Probably not going to re-sign him. Uh, so for potential... I don't think there's anybody in here that is undrafted. Um, nobody good, anyways. Martin Jones is an undrafted goalie, hey? Eh? And Georgiev? Actually, Georgiev would be... He would be the guy I want to sign. So he wants a one-year deal. I'm going to offer him, like, three million bucks for one year, and he's going to play backup, and Lindgren is going to sit, most likely. Jelkovic has been so good this year. He's actually been stupid good. Um, Frank Kuz, there's like so many goalies that end up undrafted, and it's like 
Really? Because they're actually good goalies, but... Oh, well. Anyways, um... I think that is all we're going to do for free agency. Alexander Georgiev hopefully going to sign here. We'll see what happens, but I'm simming to the next season. And Georgiev definitely signs that for three million bucks. Why wouldn't he? God, fuck you, damn it. The Troy Stetcher deal killed me. Actually, guys, one more thing I am going to do this season is we are going to go to the coaches and maybe find a new head coach. Um, I know what I'm looking for. I just don't know if we're going to find it here. Um, it is a forwards coach that I'm looking for. Preferably a pinch and shoot on the defensive end. And I want to say it's overload, carry, shoot, efficient, balanced uh, for the first line. I might be wrong. Frederick Beach looks like he could be decent, actually. Um, I'm going to offer him a deal and see how he fits on the forward end here. Um, we're going to offer him... Actually, no, we're going to offer him the head coach job. Offer him as much money as we possibly can right now. Um, so probably about a million bucks. That should be good. So we'll offer him that. Um, I do want to look at some more forward coaches here. Jason Spezza is a coach now. Not quite what we're looking for, but uh, not too far off either. Victor Dembski, I'm going to offer a... He wants an assistant coach job, so I'm going to go clear the assistant coach role and the head coach role um, on the team here, and we're going to try some new coaches out and see if that makes any difference here. Again, we'll offer those two. Go to the coaching staff. Go to Pedersen. Say, sorry, but our team sucks. You're fired. <laughs> um, go to Potter. Say, take a walk, buddy. And we're going to promote this guy to interim head coach. So we are definitely cleaning staff or cleaning cleaning shop here sorry is the word i'm looking for um so let's advance a couple days and hopefully get these guys so um quality of your roster does not match so Dembski was like nah I, i'm good thanks uh but frederick beach does sign so that's good um maybe i will try one more forward coach here um, cause yeah, I would like to have another couple coaches in here. Um, actually, you know, while we're on the topic, let's get a bunch more offensive coaches set up in here. Um, I would prefer to get quite a few here. Um, Bolton might be interesting. Nope. I'm looking to get the same kind of system coaches for both systems that's what i'm trying to do anyways um so barrel ball i'm going to offer the associate coach role too for the ahl and then we'll probably promote him c minus coach so not spectacular uh frederick lamb actually doesn't look atrocious he looks pretty decent for an NHL assistant coach, yeah, you know what? Let's just offer him the max money. Um, and I will probably promote him to associate, but I just need those coaches that fit what I'm trying to play here. Um, hopefully the max money, you know, entices him to actually come to this franchise because this team is not good by any means. Um, James Bennett, NHL associate, not quite, not quite. A lot of pension cycle in here too. Okay. Um, uh, Oleg Safranov is exactly what I'm looking for for a system. There's just no rating there though. I need a better coach. That's the only thing. Is I can't have a C minus coach as our head coach. It's just not gonna work. And now we're to balance styles. Okay. Mm. I'm going to offer Leonard Waite a, a NHL goalie coach role here. So hopefully that's going to help our goalies grow a little bit, at least. Um, 
So let's see. I just want to see what happens here with the coaching staff. I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, he's listed as head coach. He should be. Interim head coach, interim, I believe. Actually, wait, no, Beach is the guy I just signed. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so he should be the head coach. Um, Durand, hopefully, going to stick as the uh, associate coach. Um, we're trying to get the coaching staff together now. That's kind of how this is all going to go. Um, and Barabal signs as the AHL associate coach, so that's good. We're going to give him a shot at running the AHL. Uh, Frederick Lamb does sign the NHL assistant coach role. And I assume, yeah, Safranov does not. Okay. And Leonard Waite does sign the NHL goalie coach role. Okay. The coaching staff is coming together very slowly. <laughs> um, but this is looking so much better than it just was. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy with this now. I think we're going to gonna give this a good little, good little whirl here and see how things go anyways um so he can i know that's kind of backwards but bearable i want to see what he can do and this should be interesting you know we got 82 percent staff chemistry that's actually pretty good so we'll see what happens um and i did realize i've actually never really looked really hard at this but our style is uh i guess nah cut that out so anyways guys we are going to sim to the next season now we got the coaching staff somewhat lined up um and i doubt that a lot of our defensemen are going to fit you know off the start here anyways um but that's okay we'll figure it out as we go and uh yeah gonna be a strange couple seasons but hopefully the guys start to mesh properly into the nhl lineup and guys grow into the roles they're supposed to so guys, heading into the next season, this is how our lineup is going to look. We're going to play uh, Jason K, Zajac, and Kajul on the first line, Mikheyev, Sider, and Shiri on the second line, Suter, uh, K, Charlie K, and Yudes on the third line, and then Vetrano, Rodriguez, and I follow on the fourth. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four forwards making their NHL debuts this season. Then we have Mackie's been in the league for a little while here now, but we've got Giordano, Mackie, Stetcher, Simic, and then Taylor Shea, who again will be making his rookie debut this season, along with Felipe Meyer on defense. And then we have Alexander Georgiev in net, uh, backed up by Casey DeSmith. Uh, so looking at the minors here, this is what we've got going down there. Um, Terrell Perry up to a 70 overall as a sixth round pick so he's hopefully going to be absolutely insane as he gets a little bit better um bedrich ratchnik i'm really hoping can make the nhl this upcoming year but we shall see about that um garcia really has not had a great first year i was hoping he would be up a little bit higher than he was at so uh yeah that's not great but that is what it is um on defense we've got moser and kukan um on the first pairing there then we got abister and hunt on the second and then cycola and dylan on the third cycola is a pinch and cycle so not great there um if we draft a pinch and cycle defenseman i probably will change the system but uh yeah it just kind of sucks because angelo Mackey is really good um so i did want to show you guys a couple things here mainly in the edit players because i just want to introduce you visually to the players now um because i literally haven't shown you guys any of these guys up to this point so we got Eric Sider here. He, as you guys will see, is going to be the first and possibly the only captain of the Kelowna Comets here in this franchise mode. Um, just a beast of a player and hopefully going to keep putting up more and more goals as he gets a little bit better. But he will be sporting the C for the Comets here. And uh, yeah, he should be awesome. Then guys, we've got Weston Zajac, uh, number 47 there, going to be a pretty awesome playmaker. Uh, we'll see how well he fits into the lineup as... You know, our lineup kind of changed and adjusts a little bit, but he is right now playing first line center over Eric Sider just based on chemistry, um, but should be a pretty good rookie in his NHL debut season. So next up, we've got Jason K here. He's going to be wearing number 13 because he was a first round pick number three overall in 2022, I believe, when we got him. Um, 
so yeah number 13 there and uh you know brothers with charlie k but again should be a good sniper hopefully he's going to grow a lot this season and uh we'll see how his first season goes in i keep saying nhl and it should be in his first cpha season debut the next Kelowna drafted player here is Angelo Mackey, just an absolute beast, um, should be a really good defensive defenseman for this team for a long time, hopefully he can grow a bit more, but uh, yeah, that's how he's looking right now, looks like just an absolute monster, and uh, yeah, definitely been a good player for the comments so far. So next up we got Declan Eudes, uh, a right wing playmaker, pretty undersized, but honestly such a steal for where we got him at, we're in number 82, and again, rookie season, let's see how he does. Next up is Charlie K, brother of Jason K. I've got him wearing number 11. They were actually 13 and 14 in Hamilton for numbers, but I decided to change it up a little bit. And uh, the only thing that I don't like is that it doesn't say the C and the J besides um, beside their names on the back of the jerseys, but that's okay. Um, again, playmaking high elite player should be an absolutely spectacular prospect for the Comets moving forward into the future. And finally, we've got Taylor Shea, again, another Kelowna drafted player, um, another defensive defenseman, but wearing number 96, hopefully he's going to be a beast for the Comets too, and uh, should be interesting to see how these guys do with so many young faces on this team for this season. Okay, so that orange definitely doesn't match, but um, if I'm correct here, I should be able to go down to the ECHL, and there should be a Comets mask there which just looks so good oh my goodness i love it i love it. and we do get the logo on there so yeah that is awesome the only thing is it does say fort Wayne on the top of the mask but honestly who cares um yeah so that is an option here too with the team that i'm playing with anyways uh yeah it's it's pretty awesome but the pads are oh they don't match all right, so guys, we are at the start of the 2023-24 season this year. Um, we'll see what happens with the Comets, but uh, here are your team ratings for this upcoming season. No idea how good the team's actually going to perform. They might completely overachieve this year, but 91 offense, 86 defense, 84 goaltending is actually looking almost similar to a whole bunch of the other CPHA teams now, which is not normally the case, so... We'll see. The team might be really good. They might be absolutely atrocious and finish dead last again, but we'll see what happens. I would like to land a top five pick just based on the fact that there are some good looking defensemen in here this year. And obviously we can't trade up. I really don't care about any of these other guys. I would really just like to land a defenseman at this point in the lottery. And uh, yeah, there's, you know, Bukestad, Richmond, Umberger, like lots of good looking defensemen even like Yoshimura could be elite might be a top four but um oh okay Jacob Catler is in there too so yeah lots of good goalies and players we'll see what actually happens in the draft as we get further into this but anyways guys I'll be back with you guys at the end of the 2023 slash 24 regular season um, okay guys, so I gotta be a little quieter here just cause everybody else in my house is asleep, but 44, 31, and 7, what? Um, and, pff, yeah, um, <laughs> and we didn't make the playoffs. Like, what on earth is going on here? 95 points and missed the playoffs. Like, seriously? <laughs> um, I mean, Weston Zajac literally just went off, but, um... No, the Comets finish with a really, really good record. Um... Like, surprisingly strong this year. Um... <laughs> 13th best record in the NA area CPHA. And nothing, nothing to show for it at all. Who is the worst? Montreal. <sighs> what on earth is even going on? I don't understand anymore. They got Thomas full patty the other year. What? I don't get it. How do you get Van Norsworthy? And you're not a good team. Like, come on, Sask Saskatoon. That's just... Uh, what? 
I am so confused. So, so, so confused on how this is going to go. Um. So, yeah, 13th. 13th in the freaking NHL. Um, or CPHA. What the heck? So, yeah, just a very odd season here from the Comets. Um, a very good season. Don't get me wrong. We were working in the right direction, but I don't even know how to explain what's going on here. Like, Weston Zajac was our best player posting 87 points in 82 games he stayed healthy which was huge um jason k scored 38 goals in his rookie season like talk about a freaking monster um but i mean so did say jack like <laughs> there was a lot of like really good seasons here from a lot of different guys angelo Mackey put up 30 points like what uh, what um and yeah, goalies, 22 and 22. So, very strange season all around, but... <laughs> oh, we put the K brothers in the same season, and I mean, obviously, Jason outperformed Charlie a little bit, but Charlie definitely... Uh... Well, Jason K's up to an 84, but Charlie got injured too, only played... Well, not, not only played, it played 81, scored 56. Um, so yeah, that is, that is that. Um, let's see the entire league. I'm sure it's not going to be even close. Connor McDavid. Um, yes, welcome to the Connor McDavid show. Um, Leon Dreisaitl right there with him. And then 65 goals for Jeremy Simons, because why not? He's just a freaking godsend of a goal scorer. Man, do I wish we had gotten him. That would have been something special but anyways um looks like our highest score yeah is a jack probably gonna be yeah yes sir we had three of the top four rookies um five of the top seven um but langford had a pretty darn decent season in hamilton and uh harrington is on shikutami who is going to the playoffs so yeah 37 goals from a rookie is always a good thing atu ratty finally makes the league for i guess it wasn't medicine hat he was drafted by medicine hat and traded to moncton so i don't know when that deal went down but it did um gabriel letty second overall pick 27 goals montreal was terrible though this year and volpati as well just couldn't get the chemistry going unfortunately but yeah uh weston's ajack most likely gonna win the calder this year vasilevsky is 42 wins so pretty good season from him and defenseman wise we see john carlson put up 92 points and yeah just have a really good season there at 34 years old uh, a couple other guys with really good seasons too obviously we didn't have anybody else nearly in that conversation but uh yeah, just an interesting but strange season for the Comets. The thing that does actually frustrate me out of all of this is that even though it's like, yes, the team had a good season, we don't get rewarded for making the playoffs. We're probably not going to get rewarded in the lottery because we played good. Like, we don't deserve to win a lottery at this point. Like, yes, we just did last year. But what? Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get how these seasons happen where it's like, yeah, your team finished in the top 15 in the league and they, they, they don't make the playoffs, though, because there was five other teams in your division that were just godsends. Like, OK, um, whatever. I guess that is what it is. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to advance through the off season now. Um, I do want to just quickly go and take a peek at the dub or the dub, the not the dub. The AHL, um, Conacher led the team 36, 35, and 11. A very strange record there. Um, Daryl Perry, hello. Welcome to uh, the Kelowna Comets. Literally took one season for him to get NHL ready. That is gorgeous. And Hamannick is a maybe, like a might make the team eventually. But yeah, this is... Uh, is strange i mean i'm glad daryl perry's turned out to be what he is um he's going to be awesome and yeah wallstead really did not play well unfortunately um manlo had more wins than him in a lot less games 
and yeah, Psychola just not really there, unfortunately. Um, where was Garcia? I didn't even see him. Like, he was 21 points again. Yikes. Like, that's just too bad. Um, certain guys have turned out fantastic. Other guys, like Ratchinik. Where where's the uh, where's the production, my guy? Literally had a what? We're gonna have to promote him here if he's gonna actually grow it all. But yeah, um, did they make the playoffs? They did not. Okay, so literally nothing to look forward to this off season. Let's simulate. All right, guys. So yet again, we see the Quebec Nordiques and the Utica Comets win the Stanley Cup and Calder Cup. Very strange circumstances as both teams perform back to backs. Um, literally never seen that happen before. And, uh, pff, say Jack's up to an 89. Okay, um, so let's go look at the playoff trees, see if anything changed, really. Um, Red Deer makes it to the finals, loses in six. And, uh, let's see, San Jose makes it to the finals, loses in seven, so ouch. Um, obviously neither, none of our teams were in here. But you can pause the video if you want to look at uh, your teams. And you can see uh, the Wild Wings won. Uh, my face cam's kind of covering it. But the Wild Wings won in six against the Bruisers there. And then in the AHL, it would have been Charlotte went through Lehigh Valley. So, yeah. Um, let's check out player awards, though. Because this should be interesting. But anyways, uh, you can see the other team awards there. And uh, for individual awards, Connor McDavid with the Art Ross, Jack Eichel wins the heart this year, John Carlson with yet another Norris, uh, the Lady Bing goes to Artemi Panarin, Weston Zajac, our first rookie ever to win a Calder with frickin' 87 points, you would expect that to be the case, Kale McCarr wins back-to-back -back Smythe. what a guy, wow, even with McKinnon, Ranson, and all these other guys that are insane, the Quebec Nordiques are dominating, um, Ilya Sorokin, or Sorokin, Sorokin, yeah, wins the Vesna there this year, uh, Hellebuck and Subban win the Jennings together, Trevor Van Riemsdyk with back-to-back -back Mastertons, Joe Thornton with the Jack Adams, Joe Thornton, no way, Joe Thornton just won a Jack Adams, he's retired, he's still winning awards in the NHL, how, that is insane, Joe Thornton, my guy, Joe Thornton, Alexander Barkov wins the Selkie again. Um, the Ted Lindsay goes to Jack Eichel. And uh, Jeremy Simons there wins yet another Rocket. Three out of the last four. That is insane. So let's go quickly just take a peek at the uh, progress reports because we apparently have some ridiculous player growth in here. So, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, dear God. Our team's finally shooting up. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this team is actually, like, really nice now. I, I need to acquire some defensemen here uh, immediately because we are definitely lacking in that category as far as uh, prospects go. Because, yeah, this has been... Wow, the forwards are, like, legitimate. They are here. They are ready to go. That is awesome. Um... I am genuinely excited about this, and these players look fantastic. Holy, um, yeah, tons of growth this season. I'd, I'd say Zay Jack was kind of the biggest surprise, but honestly, Jason K going up that much in one season too, man, it's always nice to see. Um, Giordano drops right off like a rock, so that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Daryl Perry shot way up, literally had tied for the most growth on the team with Zajac um, in the system. Riddle shot up, okay. Silverberg did pretty good too. Um, Ratchnik up to a 79, that's gorgeous. 68 for Hamannick now, widening up to a 63. Um, and then Leno up to a 68 as well. So yeah, been an interesting couple of seasons here. We've seen a lot of growth, which is awesome, and that's exactly what we need to see. Um, but at the same time, let's see, Valcourt, okay, grew one rating, not really anything crazy, put up like the exact same stat line, uh, so yeah, he will hopefully be in the NHL, or the AHL this upcoming season, and then if he does well, then we can go from there, so let's finish this video off with the lottery, see what happens, and 
and Oshawa wins it. Okay, and we're not even on there because we're going to have pick number 16, I guess. Yeah, so we'll be picking right around 15, 16, somewhere in there. Oshawa moves from 3 to 1. Prince Albert from 5 to 2, they win another lottery. And Sherbrooke from 6 to 3 this season. All right. It is what it is, and uh, we do need to take defensemen this year, though. So I do kind of want to show you guys the draft class. There are some pretty good-looking players in here. Obviously, we don't get to touch any of these top prospects this year. If we're at pick 16, the, I mean, Cattler's available. Um, and he's a six foot five, two hundred pound goaltender, but not exactly what I'm looking to take. I'm looking more at a defenseman, and I think this guy's going to be our guy, um, Jimmy Denny, just low elite defenseman. If he can turn out to be something, my goodness. Um, so yeah, that's my main guy. I'm looking at Clancy. We're not going to get a shot at, and Silvergard. We we definitely won't get a shot at either, which is like teardrop. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to land a whole ton of crazy prospects or what's going to happen here. Colby Reitz looks like he could be good as well. Um, but again, I'm so torn on the system fit and how everything's going to fit together here with players that I'll do a little bit more research on these players before we actually uh, get to the lottery and everything, but, or before we get to the actual draft, but, uh, I think this is where I'm going to wrap it up. I'll do everything else off screen here, guys. And uh, yeah, it's been a uh, been a strange season. So, anyways, uh, let me know your comments below. I love reading your comments, playing in the back. It really helps out with uh, me getting these videos done. This guy we might be looking into, t uh, Thomas Lidman. Good looking goalie. Um, that's all I can say. So. Yeah, anyways, that is where we are going to be wrapping it up. Uh, let's let's go through player retirement first. That is one more thing that we should take a quick peek at. Um, so Anze Kopitar calls it quits. Joe Pavelski there with 996 points, four off of 1,000. Jeff Carter with 902. And a whole bunch of good players in here. Like, my goodness. Yep. Yep, that was a, that was a pretty solid retiree class. As far as goalies go, we see... Henrik Lundqvist and Marc-Andre Fleury both finishing with over a thousand games played each and over 500 wins. Holy goalies, man. This is, that is a really good, wow, one, two, three, four, four guys with a hundred, four, five, four with two hundred, two with three hundred, one with four hundred, and two with five hundred. Wow. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 goalies with over 100 wins retiring in one season. Insanity. So guys, that is where I'm going to wrap it up for this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure that you go down below, drop a like on the video. It only takes a second and it really, really helps out the channel. Also, if you haven't yet and are enjoying my content please go down below and consider hitting the subscribe button and also don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss when these videos come out but anyways guys that's going to be it for me this is Etanio signing out and see ya